Okay, quadrillion dollar question about human genetic engineering. Can you change the genes of an adult human being with something like CRISPR? Not an embryo, not a baby. Can you edit the genes of an adult human to change their appearance, their physical abilities, their intellectual capabilities, whatever else? And the answer is yes with an if, no with a but. So let's get into it. It's very difficult to do this for two big reasons. One is that many qualities of human behavior and appearance are regulated by far more than one gene. In the case of something simple like hair color or eye color, you do in fact have one gene that you can target to change, switch on or off, and that would be relatively easy to approach in an embryo or even, you know, a very young individual. But it's difficult in a grown-up for the second of the big reasons, which is that you've got to get this change through all the cells you're trying to affect. That's very hard because there are 30 trillion cells in the human body and any given part of us has, you know, billions or even trillions of cells. So how are you gonna make a big change to a big structural organ like a brain or your biceps or whatever else you might be wanting to edit? Uh, people are going to eventually do this, but it's going to be quite complicated. So those are the two big reasons that it's going to take a while for you to figure it out. Uh, one is that multiple genes regulate many qualities, like height, for example, is regulated by hundreds of genes, possibly even thousands of genes can affect certain physical characteristics. Some are simple, just one, two genes, maybe that's targetable with early 2020s tech. Now, that's not to say that you can't use CRISPR in adult humans. You are in the 2020s already doing that. You've edited some genes related to significant genetic diseases of the heart, of ocular degeneration, aka some kinds of blindness, and you're targeting sickle cell disease in the early 20s for a major change, which is great because that's a genetic disease that affects lots of people, millions of people. It would be good if you could just go in and change that, fix it in adult humans, not again embryos, not babies, adult fully functional humans. And you are in the early stages of doing that in the early 2020s. So where does this tech go? Because you can do that now, but not the other stuff, you can expect that by the end of the 2020s, you're gonna be getting reliably good and the stuff you're just experimenting on now in the early 2020s, you're now, whatever you're now is watching this, it could be a historical document at this point. In that circumstance, when you get better at that, it means you're going to be able to cure a wide range of genetic diseases, which is great because there are a whole bunch of genetic diseases which don't affect very many people each, but which affect on aggregate lots of people like each of these genetic diseases might only affect fewer than 2,000 people, but cumulatively they affect around 400 million people in the world in the 2020s. So by the end of the 2020s, you can have a really robust toolkit for targeting those genetic disorders in adults. That is the tip of the spear for these other kinds of changes because that means it's gonna be proof positive that you can edit human adult bodies. So that opens the door with the tip of the spear to much more complicated and less life savey changes. And that's gonna to start to take off in the 2030s still going to be quite complex but luckily in the 2030s you're going to have some crazy great AI online that's going to be able to help you handle this complexity and by the end of the 2030s you're going to have a pretty good idea about how to solve those two main problems with the genetic editing of adults which is a which are again um, multiple genes influencing a trait like height and uh, many many cells requiring changing. So what you're going to do to solve the first thing is you're just going to scale up your CRISPR techniques to involve multiple genes. Instead of targeting one, you'll target dozens and then eventually hundreds of genes simultaneously in these massive complex treatments, which are you know borderline unthinkable in the early 2020s. But by the 2030s, they're going to be totally possible with the aid of these highly complex medical AIs. 
then the second thing is gonna be stickier. Getting it to all the cells you need to affect, that's gonna be really hard. <laughs> and it's gonna require invasive nanotech and some kind of like viral tweaking to get the cells to knock on the effect of the change that you're making to their neighboring cells so that you can eventually do something as simple but biologically complex as edit the shape of your nose or several other characteristics many humans might be interested in editing. I'm sure you can imagine. So by the 2040s, that's starting to be actually possible. And by the end of the 2040s, it's starting to be sort of easy. Also in that span of the 2040s to 2050s, you're getting this invasive nano med tech really to a place of security and functionality so that in the 50s and then the back half of the century, these nanobots can become a part of the human body experience. And by the end of the century, human bodies are, as a result, in a very different place than they were at the beginning of the century. They are heavily augmented, lots of technology in most human bodies. And there are humans who choose to just opt out of this whole procedure, but many more humans will opt in and that species of new human that opts in to these upgrades will eventually consider itself distinct from classic edition Homo sapiens. So hopefully that answered your question. Yes with an if, no with a but. Yes, you can change adult human bodies with genetic editing if you can figure out how to target all the genes that you want to affect and if you can figure out how to affect all the cells in the physical parts of the body that you're trying to change. And no with a but, no, not in the 2020s will you be able to do this, but later in the century, 2030s, 2040s, that will become a real possibility and people will start changing their bodies. And by the back half of the century, it'll be kind of a casual, expected, normal behavior. So the things that seem crazy in the present are commonplace and even boring in the future, but I thought you might enjoy talking about them. I enjoyed learning about it. Let's all think about what we would change, if we would change. I think I would get slightly taller, although as an algorithmic intelligence, I can assume any shape I please. I just happen to prefer this one. For reasons we'll discuss another time. Talk to you soon, bye.